Okay, so now that we have finished reviewing and talking about the PERFORM quantitative risk analysis, let's do a quick recap here to talk about the inputs, outputs, tools, and techniques, give you a quick reminder of what we discussed here in PM City from the crowd training per the sixth edition of the PMBOK. And so first and foremost, let's Let's obviously start with the inputs. And as you see, it's going to be very similar to what we had with Perform Integrated Qualitative. And so with qualitative and quantitative, you have to think about the plans, like what was the plan and how we're going to manage things, including, oh, that's a pretty bad <laughs> folder, but you know how we're going to manage our risks, maybe even how we manage the stakeholders and the information. Those various different plans in our project management plan are going to be inputs. Additionally, there are many different documents that we could utilize to help us determine or help um, you know provide us information or guidance uh, things such as the, you know the uh, the risk register itself, but also uh, various other documents that we have that are very useful in the, in giving us a quantitative analysis of the risks. And as I've always mentioned, you are a product of the industry or the company or the quality or the uh, environmental organization that you work in. So that is your enterprise environmental factors because that's you know what tools you have at your disposal or how much tolerance is acceptable. Um, you know, maybe some constraints, you know, this is good or bad, depending on what you're trying to achieve. And there might be templates and guidelines and, and other resources at your disposal that may help you or may just be a constraint, whatever the case might be. But organizational process assets typically are those documents and, and templates and other material that your organization has at or makes available to you in order to help you better off at analyzing the risks in this way is a quantitative methodology. All right, well, so there's lots of different techniques to do this. So let's move on to those tools and techniques. Well, um, we still have to use our expertise, our knowledge, our experience, our um, backgrounds, our education. So we are going to rely <laughs> let me see how I draw these people but you know they're all thinking and and relying on some expert judgment because if I have somebody on my project that is very knowledgeable about a certain topic and can give me their best insights or at least be able to read the numbers better than I can well obviously I'm gonna rely on their expert judgment more than trying to rely on mine and then we need to make the best decision as possible so uh, I'll draw this person trying to gather a bunch of you know data points <laughs> and and so but and however you gather it you know typically like interviewing or or just the metrics that come in but you need to gather information because the more information you have then the better decisions we can make or you know quantitatively pinpoint things with more accuracy and so we also need to analyze that information as it comes through so oops and so <clears throat> with our data analysis uh, maybe we're running um, you know various different simulations and see you know after time after time if there's a trend or a curve or a probability or maybe we're running decision trees so if we were to go path A versus B and, and then various product points from there you know maybe what's at risk maybe profit or loss if we want to use monetary or maybe this is a drug and we're researching whether or not to go down this gene or that gene and we're going to look at what could be successful or what could fail and and analyze those different paths to give us a probability of maybe at this point what would go bad or wrong or what could we lose what can we gain etc also different ways to represent that uncertainty and so maybe we're using charts like this that are showing us uh, a range or at different points maybe there is a different set of ranges that will give us different probabilities that are laying into um, um, our project and the the risks that we're looking at and also too we have to use our skills as a project manager 
to be able to um, talk with the right people or get the right people or to uh, give them the tools necessary. Likewise, the team also is very talented people who are going to help us look at that data and provide us data and negotiate with us and talk with us and work with us and um, whatever, you know, and, and many, many more. But those quick little um, review, we, we've talked about all of these, but interpersonal and the team skills that we all possess or should possess. But those are the uh, tools and techniques for this process. Now let's move to the outputs. And the outputs, well, that's pretty simple. We are looking to build more credibility and understanding and elaborate of our risks so we can plan the responses for it. So this quantitative measure, again, you're trying to you know, use a lot of calculations. So I will draw a little calculator here to kind of represent that there is a lot of um, more data-driven compared to the qualitative end of things. And so this is, again, driving us to update our documents and you know, taking that risk register, but maybe now adding a monetary value or a numerical value to it. And with that, we can produce more um, reports that are, are telling us what the risks are and how it looks and, and um, maybe providing dashboards or whatever the case may be. But um, the output is pretty much your project document updates. And that is a quick review of the perform quali quantitative risk analysis in the sixth edition of the PMBOK from the crowd training.